guys, we're Ian and Anna, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing a seven day road trip through one of our favorite states, Utah. Because our van is over in Europe, we picked up a camper van from our friends at True Van in LA and drove all the way to Bryce Canyon to start this epic road trip. Let's get right in. She, she loves me, she loves me, she loves me not. Anna and I got here last night. We're a little bit jet lagged and tired, but we had to get up for sunrise because a sunrise at Bryce Canyon, you can't beat it with the orange rocks and there was snow this time, which was so special. And I think one of the biggest reasons we're making this video is to show you why you should travel to national parks during winter time. It's currently December 9th and it's about eight degrees here in the morning and about 20 in the afternoon. So it's chilly, but the best part is there's no one here and you get snow on the ground. If I really love a place, I tend to cry and last time we were at Bryce Canyon I cried and I literally cried this morning it's one of my favorite places in the world so if you've never been high up on your bucket list for sure look at the snow contrasting with the orange rocks we've never seen it like this before and it is definitely worth coming even though we live in Europe the US is still one of our favorite places so we just want to encourage everyone you don't have to fly across the world to have an adventure there's adventure in your own home country and honestly I think it has unmatched beauty so my favorite trail is the Navajo Loop Trail this is like a famous saw I'm sure you've seen before we're not gonna hike it right now because we did it this morning but if you guys want a bunch of travel tips on Bryce Canyon watch our old video right here. This is gonna be more of like a fun road trip vibe rather than complete travel guide. Just set up our tripod and our lens broke. It's really expensive. We're just gonna go back to the van and calm down for a little bit. <laughs> Before leaving Bryce Canyon, we had to go to our favorite barbecue spot in Utah, only 20 minutes outside the park called I Don't Know Barbecue. We actually lost the footage of this night we went, so I'm showing you the clips of when we went in 2020. We really can't recommend this place enough. It's a must do when you're in Bryce and you have to try their apple cobbler for dessert. Just trust me, it is delicious. It is day two of our road trip. We drove three hours last night and slept outside of Factory Butte. That's what's right behind me. It is so beautiful. Ian and I have been wanting to go for three years now because that was the last time we were in Utah and we didn't think our van would make it, so we never went and we didn't know if this van would make it, but it did. We're super impressed with it. They say you usually need a four by four, but as long as you're driving really carefully and maybe your car is a bit elevated, you should be fine. Just proceed with caution. I'm just laughing my butt off because last night, we pulled up it's pitch black right and Ian starts saying like what if we're abducted by aliens and I was like dude you can't say that right before bed so I didn't get any sleep last night I mean look if you're gonna be abducted by aliens don't you think it'd be somewhere like this you can see these tire tracks throughout the entire butte because people go off-roading in their UTVs ATVs or their 4x4s all through these ridges leading up to that massive butte this morning I'm cooking some sausage and eggs with a view it's really nice in here we're just gonna have our little breakfast before we head to our next stop close by Bon Appetit to Utah. Just down the road from Factory Butte is where we want to go to tonight. It's called Moonscape and it's like a beautiful overlook. So it's only a 10 minute drive from this spot, which is really nice. We're just gonna like post up for the day and wait for sunset and we'll get Starlink going so we can call our mom so they know we're alive. We decided we're not going to Moonscape Overlook because it's a little sketchy with this two-wheel drive van. I recommend bringing a 4x4 with a little bit higher clearance. We don't want to risk it and get stuck out here. Especially look at weather too. If it rains, you will definitely get stuck. Just means we can come back to Utah and do something new the next time. After driving four hours up north, we finally made it to Salt Lake City and we had to come up here to pick up a lens to rent. This is the lens I'm shooting on just for a wide angle because we're doing a van tour back here today. Now this isn't Salt Lake City. We actually drove another hour, 45 minutes to the Bonville Salt Flats, one of our favorite spots in all of Utah because it's this massive, massive salt flat you could drive on. It really looks like the moon and it also has some of the best sunsets in the world. So we actually got this van from a van conversion company out in Los Angeles. They're called 
called Truvan. It's a father and son duo that do van conversions. This is their Ram Promaster version, but they also do a Ford Transit or a Mercedes Sprinter van. So if you're looking to get into van life, they are the best people to go to. They have all sorts of different designs and customizations. I will make sure to link them down below this video, but you should also definitely check out the van tour video we're filming right now. childhood best friend of 17 years and my maid of honor Val she lives in Salt Lake City and we're gonna be having dinner with her right now at Mumbai house fun fact every time we've had Indian food in Utah it's been like beyond good it's some of the best Indian food and I don't know why and then afterwards we might sleep outside her house or in her house we haven't decided yet this has to be the best reviewed restaurant of all time Anna looked it up it has 4.9 stars out of 9,000 reviews that's blowing my mind I'm so excited to get some Indian food it's one of Anna and I favorite cuisines even though we haven't been to India yet. For our starter we got the assorted snacks. There is veggie and chicken pakora as well as vegetable samosas which are my favorite. That's Val, my oh, wow. maid of honor and longest best friend in the world and her boyfriend Nathan. <laughs> hey guys, hey. how long have you guys been living in Salt Lake? been three years yeah. now. About three years. Yeah. And why do you love it? We love the outdoors. We love being able to like live in the city, but then just go up to the mountain and go skiing whenever we want or go hiking. Just, yeah. I don't know. So much to do here. What are we going to do tomorrow? Maybe. We're going to hit the slopes. Oh. We're going to go skiing. We're going to go snowboarding. So everyone gets a massive bowl of rice and then either chicken tikka masala or butter chicken is on the table. Yeah, I got very hot. Others got different types of hot levels, but there's five different ones. This looks absolutely amazing we're gonna dig in happy birthday to you happy birthday to you mumbai house Just getting fitted with board rentals down the street from Val's house before we head to, where are we going? We're going up to Solitude Mountain, Solitude. up in uh, Big Cottonwood Canyon. This snowboard rental yeah, is costing us $40 for the board boots and everything, and if you want a helmet, it's another 12. I thought that was a really good price. I feel like I've paid way higher renting before, so to be able to be in Utah only paying that is super nice. Shout out to Utah Ski and Golf. If you're in the area, this is the place to rent. You know, we've got a lot going on. We decided to just do a beginner ticket. It was $80. And since I haven't snowboarded since college probably, and I also don't have health insurance right now since we live in Europe, we decided this is the best way to go. You have access to the small mountain and then the one right above it. Val and Nathan have icon passes because they live out here. So they just have like, you know, unlimited access. I feel a little bit bad for Ian. I think he could do something more advanced, but we're just gonna take it down to Anna's level today. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> I did two runs. The first one was a real learning curve. The second one was better. Oh, these are cute. And now I think I am good to go, guys. This is the third run total, so we're, let's see how Anna does. We're hitting the next level. We're going on Moonbeam lifts. Anna's been crushing it. I'm very proud. So she's ready. Waking up this morning at Zion National Park. We drove about four hours last night from Salt Lake City. That was so much fun with Val, Nathan, their roommate Jake. I'm so glad we went up there, especially because we weren't even planning on it. And now we are thinking about moving there after we ship our van back from Europe. That's one of the spots that's on our list because there's just so much to do. But for right now, we're going on a sunrise hike in Zion. Right now we're the only ones in the park. It feels so weird having it all to ourselves because I think this is the most crowded park we've ever been to when we were here in the summer. So it's very spiritual right now. It's so empty right now and I could just walk in the road. Look how cool this is. It's really dark, but this shows you when you have to hike. Oh, 
It's about a 15 minute hike to this really, really cool overlook spot. It is so beautiful this morning. I'm happy that we mustered the strength to get up. You can't beat this view for a 15 minute hike. You really can't. Yeah, and especially with the sunrise hitting the cliffs, making it more red in the distance is really, really cool. I think this is the best value hike in Zion because it's only a 15 minute walk and it has the most insane views. It kind of reminds me of the views you get from Angel's Landing. So if you want to learn more about what to do in Zion National Park, definitely click right up here on one of our old videos where we did Angel's Landing, which is crazy. The only thing that isn't in that video is how to get a permit for Angel's Landing because when we went, you didn't have to have one. After driving two more hours from Zion, we made it to Valley of Fire State Park. It's one of our favorite spots out here, especially because it's only a state park and not a lot of people here. Super underrated and I highly recommend it on any of your road trips. We're gonna end the vlog here today, but before we do so, we're gonna take you to the world's biggest candy cane. This is only a 15 minute hike and it's super easy so anyone could do it, but I recommend coming for sunrise or sunset because the colors are the best. <sighs> It's definitely up there with one of my favorite places. I feel like I've said that on every place we've been to in this video. So Bryce, you have an above viewpoint and you look down on the hoodoos. Zion, it's like more mountainous. And then this is like rocks jutting out and like valleys of fire. That's exactly why it's called that. Just look at these orange and white streaks all along the ground here that lead up to the candy cane. I mean, there is nothing like it on this earth. <laughs> And here is the world's biggest candy cane. Look at those stripes of orange, red, and white. It goes all the way around this massive bowl and it just keeps going all the way. Done with our seven day road trip. Now it's time to head back to Cleveland for the holidays, Christmas time, New Year's. Yeah. I'm already eating a candy cane, ready to eat my body weight and Christmas food and spend time with family. But this is a great oh trip gosh. in the US. The best. We're excited to go back to Europe in our van, but can't wait to even come back to the US in a year. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, and if you guys didn't know, we did ship our van to Europe last year. So check out this whole playlist right up here. We also found kittens along the way and now have three traveling in the van with us. So if you like pets, we give plenty of pet friendly uh, travel tips. So. Yes, we miss our kittens. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace. See you in the next one.